What's up everybody, I'm Jason C and welcome back to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. From the makers of Barrelcraft Spirits, a new brand has emerged called Stellum Spirits. This is a new national brand created to celebrate the modern day whiskey drinker offering a bourbon, rye, and single barrels, which are all bottled at cast strength. Today we have the bourbon and rye blends we will be trying. Let's take a deep dive into this new brand, talk about what's in the bottle, and see if these new entries are worth a pickup here on the Mash and Drum. We're all familiar with Barrelcraft Spirits and their ability to put out very unique blends, utilizing a huge portfolio of whiskeys at their disposal to craft bourbons, whiskeys, rums, ryes, and funky finishes, like we see in Dovetail and the new Seagrass, which I just reviewed. Joe Beatrice, founder of Barrelcraft Spirits, wanted to start a new brand that takes those same blending skills and apply it to a regular, standard, and consistent release called Stellum Spirits. Now, according to the press release, Stellum strives to improve the flavor process and ideals of traditional American whiskeys. American culture has always been about reaching towards modernity. Stellum looks beyond outdated assumptions of who whiskey drinkers and whiskey makers are to embrace that fundamentally progressive ethos. All right, let's continue. The launch of Stellum Spirits is the result of Barrelcraft Spirits' years of industry-leading innovation in American whiskey. This new project investigates the importance of nuance and micro-differentiation in a pared-down and minimalist setting. Stellum is designed to be clean, straightforward, and remarkably polished. This is a whiskey factored down to its most defining essentials, blended and packaged with an eye towards clean lines and definition. So I know Joe Petrus has a marketing background and so do I, and that's a lot, a lot of fancy marketing words for whiskey. But you know, if, uh, if the whiskey tastes good, then they could say whatever the hell they want. All right guys, so some tidbits about the whiskey itself. So the name Stellum is a derivative of the Latin word Stella for star. Now the core Stellum bourbon release is cast strength at 114.98 proof. It's a blend of three Indiana bourbon mash bills, uh, Kentucky bourbon and Tennessee bourbon. The base of the blend is five to six year old barrels, but four to 16 year old barrels are also utilized. This isn't a batch, this will be always available and a consistent flavor profile. Now the Stellum Rye release is also bottled at cast strength. In this uh, case, it's 116.24 proof. This is a blend of the popular 95 Five Rye Indiana Mash Bill. Kentucky and Tennessee rye barrels are also used in a small amount to add complexity and mouthfeel. A four to 10 year blend overall. This will also remain consistent and not be batched. So Barrelcraft Spirits typically uses a blend of Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee in their blends, but Stellum is far more Indiana focused, so a lot more MGP in these blends than we're used to with the regular uh, barrel bourbon releases. So, you know, more MGP is always a good thing. Now, I mentioned earlier that there will also be single barrel versions of these, uh, the bourbons and ryes. There will also be bottled at cast strength, but those will contain all MGP, all Indiana distillate in those uh, single barrels. So I haven't seen those hit the mark yet, but I'd be really curious to try those as well. So both the core bourbon and core rye expressions have an MSRP of only $54.99, and they're available at select retailers in 45 US markets and online at stellumspirits.com. So I gotta say, I'm digging the price point on these considering we are getting quality whiskey from a blender with a great pedigree. There's a lot of competition in that, you know, that 50 to $55 area. So to start out at that price point, I think it's pretty gutsy. But the one thing you could say is these guys have a lot of quality barrels to start with that are already in their portfolio. They have a pretty simple bottle design and that blending pedigree I mentioned. They have an opportunity to make some noise in that pricing tier. So let's see how it is. Let's start with the bourbon first. So beautifully balanced bourbon nose here. Get a nice punch of caramel, you know, immediately. Also some really nice candied oranges punching through. There is some herbal, you know, qualities coming through. I think I do get a little bit of some rye spice in there. 
Now, if they're using a lot of the Indiana mash bills at NGP, I feel like you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get some of that uh, citrus forward flavor that you typically get from MGP. Definitely getting in here a little bit. It's a slight nuttiness to it as well. Maybe like a, like a toasted almond. Little nice touch of oak as well. Getting a very faint uh, like espresso note on here as well, which, you know, I love, love my espresso. There's a very mild, a little bit of a smoky note there, getting a little bit of the barrel char. Yeah, good vanillas, caramels, good spice. Love the candied orange note. That's uh, very typical of not only something that you find in uh, MGP, but also I think you you know you get a lot of it in some of the the uh, the ultra aged Tennessee whiskeys sometimes. Uh, if you ever have like some of those 15 year Dickel whiskeys that are higher proof, even the bottled and bonds, they tend to have like these candied orange note as well. A little bit of uh, butter pecan in here too. Kind of like it, butter pecan. For all of you out there that don't know, I always say butter pecan. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Here we go. Wow, first sip was pretty impressive, I gotta say. This has a lot of things I look for in a, in a bourbon, especially one that's MGP heavy. Got a lot of caramel vanilla up front, a little brown butter. Comes through like just a huge punch of citrus and spice. Then the spice lingers on and on and on. This is my first sip of the day, so let's go back and see what we get. Here we go. So the second sip was a little bit more tame. I got some caramel apple in there, which is really nice. The citrus notes are definitely there. It's probably the most dominant note to me is this uh, like this candied orange peel, but just dusted with black pepper. That little touch of smoke comes out just right on the back end of the palate. Let's go for another sip. It's a nice blend. So the finish for me, you know, the first sip was very punchy, but again, that was my first sip. The subsequent sips here, the finish isn't as long as I thought it would be. You're not, I'm not really feeling it in the chest. I'm feeling it more in the back of the palate. But yeah, the citrus, the caramel, the vanilla. It's a very solid bourbon. Let's go for one last sip here. Man, the more I sip this, the more orange comes through. Orange zest, candied orange. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's all intermingled with the... Now, when they say that it's a little bit more MGP forward, I could see that. You could, you could taste it. You could taste all that citrus coming through it. A lot of vanilla, a lot of caramel, black pepper, hint of smoke, touch of smoke on the very end. You got a little bit of a layer of nuttiness there too, I think. A little bit of, a, like I said, like that butter pecan note that's coming through. But for 55 bucks for a predominantly MGP... Uh, bourbon, I think is a very well, now we have, you know, the George Remus, that's, uh, that's, that's also out there around 45 to $50 as well. I think this is a little bit more layered than the George Remus. You know, you have that typical blend in there. You have that, you know, Kentucky, Indiana and Tennessee blend. The Tennessee, I'm not getting too much. Maybe it, it's applying a little bit to the orange, a little bit to the back end there. I'm not really getting that typical, you know, that, uh, that George Dickel, you know, vitamin note that everyone seems to stray away from. This is way more MGP forward, as they had mentioned, and you definitely get that on the palate. All right, so let's go to the rye here. Remember 116 and change for the proof point. So this is predominantly 95.5 MGP rye. Then they blended some Kentucky and Tennessee rye in there to, uh, to blend in as well. Overall, it, I think I mentioned that the age here is about four to 10 years old with all the blends in there. So let's try it. Yeah, so it doesn't come off as spicy and herbal on the nose that I would that you would typically get from a 95.5 rye. I think the blend of the Tennessee and the, and the Kentucky uh, ryes, which are typically, you know, a lot higher in uh, in corn and just one of those barely legal ryes, I could see that rounding out those uh, rough edges of a 95.5. It's very candy. It's very sweet, actually. I'm actually getting less, uh, yeah, wow. The, the rye is coming across a little bit more, you know, richer. I mean, you get those herbal notes, but I'm getting a lot more like the caramel vanillas in here as well. I think the, again, those Kentucky and um, Tennessee ryes really rounded this out. Get some really nice mint here, a little bit of allspice. Picking up a little bit of clove here too, which is nice. But yeah, it's all kind of intermingled with that. You know, nice caramel vanilla note. Still getting a nice citrus spice, but this one's coming off a little bit more of a, of a lemon to me. 
a little bit of a lemon peel. Slight like touch of a chocolate note here too. It's a nice nose for a rye, especially 55 bucks. Let's go for a sip. Oh, that's all rye on the palate. That's all rye on the palate, baby. <laughs> yeah, this is, you can taste the rye spice here. There's a lot of rye spice on here. Again, the allspice takes over. It has like that minty, peppermint uh, kind of, I don't want to say piney. I mean, pine is, I think there's a pine, you know, note that's there, but it's not overpowering it at all. Nice spice in the back end for rye. Let's go for another sip. Mmm. So the back end, you guys know me. You guys know I'm very sensitive to black licorice. There's a, there's a heavy black licorice note on this that I'm picking up. Reminds me a little bit of some of the Willets that I've had. Some of the Willet Rise. Hmm. Let's go for another sip. Get some sweet, you get some spice, some clove, some allspice, maybe a little touch of chocolate. But then on the back end, yeah, you get that, that heavy black licorice note, a lot of spice. It's another solid rye. So I think if you're a, a Kentucky rye purist and you like those lower rye mash bills, if you're looking at, you know, if, if there's a lot of Pikesville on your shelf, you know, from Heaven Hill, if you have some Knob Creek rye, you know, if you even the Maryland style rye, if you lean towards Sagamore, which is a little bit of a sweeter rye profile, not sure you would like this. This again, this is more on the, the heavy rye side. Again, get a lot more of the heavy rye spice notes here. A little bit of black licorice. Let's go for another sip. Yeah, it's got like this clove, black licorice, citrus, orange peel, all in intermingled together with a little, you know, and then you have your typical caramel vanillas here with a lot of spice. That pine is still coming through. It's a really solid rye. All right, so let's wrap this up. So barrel bourbon, the regular barrel releases that usually typically cost anywhere from 100 to 110, sometimes 130 for the, uh, for the store picks for those releases. You know, I think that's really geared for an enthusiast, but these, I think really make a nice entry into the market here at that $55 price point. Uh, you know, buyers that are out there that are looking for something different but don't wanna spend $100, $150 on anything, have the chance to get a really nice blend here uh, in, in both cases. I'll probably do a comparison in the future here. I gotta try to pick some blends here that I really like. I think, I think you could put this in the category as the new Pursuit series from the Bourbon Pursuit guys. Uh, what Penelope Bourbon is doing with their four grain uh, and a couple of other blends. It's, it's really well done. Again, this is a primarily heavy NGP bourbon style. If you like that style, if you like that profile, the heavy orange, caramel vanilla, a little bit of smoke, all that stuff that I mentioned, you're going to absolutely love this and you won't have to break the bank to get it. If you love NGP, this will be a great pickup. Now the ride to me is a little bit more compelling. If you like I said, you have to like those flavors that I mentioned, the orange, the black licorice, a uh, little bit of caramel and vanilla. If you love those flavors, a little bit of the pine, the rye spice, the mintiness, if all those strong flavors are there and that's your rye style, this is an immediate pickup. It's, uh, it's great, especially for, uh, for 55 bucks, a cast strength, primarily MGP, four to 10 years old rye blend. I think it's an absolute great blend, but again, you have to like those flavors. This plays right into that area where Pikesville is. If you're gonna be, I think Pikesville, which is usually my go-to $50 bottle of rye, if I'm gonna spend 50 or even Sagamore uh, Spirit, of uh, that cast strength rye, this one is on the other side of that flavor spectrum. While Sagamore has some of that spiciness and the pine going on, it's not nearly as heavy as I'm tasting in here. This has way more black licorice and citrus than I get in those other uh, two. And the Pikesville is way more sweet way more geared towards a typical bourbon drinker rather than a rye whiskey enthusiast. So if that's what you like in this bottle, then for 55 bucks for that type of a rye from MGP uh, with some other stuff blended in, I think it's an absolute great blend. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new Stellum bourbon from Barrelcraft Spirits. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had these yet, if you've picked them up. I've seen a lot of great press on these and I could see why. Uh, I think the bourbon is probably going to be more of a universal favorite, whereas the rye is going to appeal to a certain type of rye drinker. But let me know. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of these. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So I'm going to make a boo rye.
Hey, uh, barrel blends like crazy. I'm gonna make a little bit of a blend here. Here we go. That works. Try it. 